a minimum of six tenths of a foot of beach yeah. a year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Good evening. I'd like to call to order a regular city council meeting of the city of Satellite Beach, January 3rd, 2018, approximately 7 p.m. Please join Councilman Osmer for a moment of silence and the pledge. Please join me in a moment of silence, please. Thank you for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, open up the floor for citizens' comments. This is for non-agenda items. The floor is open. Here are no citizens' comments. Move back to city council comments. I, I would just like to probably echo what a lot of people are talking about is you know, all things we did in December, the open house at the fire station, well received, great crowd, the, the Santa, the Jingle Bell run. I mean, you saw a lot of people from the community out there, a lot of people enjoying themselves. I, I think the city and the staff, everybody does a, a great job of, of pulling those things together. Wherever you went and wherever I went talking to people, everybody seemed very excited about all those things that, that we did. So. You know, good hurrah for all those folks that did put all that together. That's all. The only thing I have is, and actually it was Dominic that kind of teed this up for me, but I've got a Community for a Lifetime presentation, kind of healthcare wellness presentation in Indy Atlantic on Saturday the 13th. Um, just kind of following up on all the stuff we've been working on and all that sort of thing. So that's all Great, I have. Thank you. Um, just Christmas was great. Um, we did the Jingle Bell two miler, and I'm just gonna toot my daughter's horn. She got first place in her age group, and I got seventh, but still. Um, <laughs> um, I love that we have that race. And just so you guys know, the Running Zone Race Series, the Jingle Bell two miler, is part of that series, and it is the most attended race that they have, mm -hmm. other than the Space Coast Marathon and Half Marathon. So. It's just that good of a race. We want to keep pumping that up. But I'm not happy New Year. Looking forward to good things in the upcoming year. I um, I just want to echo some of the comments here, but I also want to bring out the uh, employee luncheon. That was a great great luncheon for the employees at Christmas. And, um, I'm sorry that you were taken advantage of, but Jeff did a good job. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to thank Council for, um, I, I wasn't here at the first meeting in December when you all um, appointed me as Vice Mayor, so I want to thank you for that. You're um, welcome. Your vote Be of confidence. Being a guy, again, a guy, you know, gone another time. <laughs> I'll make sure that I don't miss consecutive right. meetings. But I, but I do know that, that I really appreciate, you know, the latitude that you all give me for the other things that I do with the League of Cities and the Space Coast League of Cities, and I really do appreciate it because it's uh, it's important for us to be involved, and, and um, I, I thank you for letting me do it. Well, thank you. Well, for doing you do a great job out there representing not only the city but the county. So thank you. I saw you on Facebook the other day too, in the little video, and it was really good. Oh, well, so thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also attended the uh, open house at the fire department, yeah. and that was great. And I also attended the police, the volunteer luncheon. Mm -hmm. And look, it's pretty interesting. When they add up all the hours, uh, I got to say, pretty amazing program. A program that probably saves the city in excess of $150,000. Uh, and the hours that the people put out, and really the fun that they have doing it. It's a really great group close-knit group there, and uh, Linda and that whole department does a really great job on it. So I just wanted to mention them. And uh, new year, everybody. Um, moving on, any other council comments? I, I, just wanna, I don't know if anybody noticed um, Doug Butler, the track and cross-country coach from Satellite. Uh, he was recognized. I guess they had a program. I didn't realize this uh, for the SPCA when the hurricane was coming, and they needed foster parents to basically take all their animals in 
and uh, Doug Butler and I saw was highlighted in one of the local papers that he went and, and took in a, a couple dogs during the storm. I guess they end up getting all the animals were fostered throughout the hurricane. And, um, and I think afterwards, actually six of them found permanent homes. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was nice that Doug Butler, our you know, satellite beach guy, was recognized, right? They had a picture of him and the dogs and stuff on it. So cool. I, thought that, I thought that was really great. Thank you. Um, Courtney, one other question, and I could say doing your report now, this is kind of How's the track coming? And I don't know. We've sent our money over, and they have all the funds. I think it went out to bid like the day we sent everything in. So okay. my, my understanding is that it will be completed by the beginning of track season. Okay. There, there were, they were calling us incessantly to get the payment, so they were obviously ready to go. Right. Yeah, I knew I saw it. You know something on that. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, any further city council comments? Here and none. Move on to agenda item five, city manager report. Courtney. Thank you, Mayor. On January 6, from 6:30 to 9:30, Satellite Beach Powell will have their next teeny bopper night for K through six graders. And on January 25th at 6 p.m., the city will host a sustainability workshop to educate the public about stormwater, bioswales, and the DeSoto Parkway Stormwater Enhancement Project, funded in part by a grant from the IRL National Estuary Program. And this workshop will be held here in the city council, hall, um, council chambers. Um, I have two events to add to that. We also are holding a sustainability summit on February 8th with every other sustainability board in Brevard County. And that will be held at the Civic Center at 6 p.m. At 5 p.m., we're having a pre-summit workshop where FIT will be presenting to interested parties uh, on how to create a sustainability plan. And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to start the, the summit. Um, each board will present what they've done so far, and then we will have a presentation by Brevard Zoo. And then we're going to have a keynote speaker, which is uh, Chris Castro from the city of Orlando and their sustainability director over there and he's going to come in and speak for 30 minutes on what they're doing over there. Um, yep. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, February 8th at 6. And then we also, um, if you haven't, let us know if you want to go to the Florida League of Cities Action Days. Legislative Action Days is January 29th through 31st. Um, I believe I have myself, Dominic, and Mindy all going. So if anybody else wants to go to that, let me know. Did you all get, have you got hotel rooms yet? I think she's already scheduled all that, yeah. Good. Because the double tree is already filled. And we might not be in that already. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm there one night, but I couldn't get the first night. So I'm somewhere else the first night. Um, the Satellite Beach Library is currently closed for renovations and will be reopened after January 16th. We've received a thank you note from the Ruth family expressing their appreciation for the Fire Department Open House event. And we also received another thank you note from Stuart Mapes regarding the thoughtful and courteous work provided by the Public Works team when they were working on a stormwater project on Lemon Street. We are having a lot of difficulty hiring staff in public works because of our salary and we know it's from our um, we know it's our salary largely because they're, they're telling us <laughs> it's our salary so we're getting people we actually had hired one person he, he just walked away today um, because he could make some money better money somewhere else so we are recommending that we conduct a wage study on the public works department um, and that study will cost four thousand two hundred and we have this available already in our general government services um, when we were going through that scope of work and looking at the tiers of, um, of, of the pay scale and how that would apply to other departments, we realized that we're going to run into a problem there and that we really needed to expand the pay study citywide. So we will be bringing that back to you as an agenda item at your next meeting um, because that's obviously more expensive and we, you know, it's beyond our bid requirements. And um, we believe we have the money um, budgeted but we'll let you know where that's coming from when we, when we have that agenda item. So um, if you think it's weird that we were just doing public works, we realized it was. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to expand that. Uh, we are going to be adding a part-time staff assistant to provide front desk phone coverage at the DRS Community Center, and this will be funded using existing budgeted dollars 
in the part-time wages line item. So we have that funded already. Um, but if you've ever called the rec department and get a, um, a busy signal or a no answer in an answering machine, that's the problem that we're trying to solve. Yeah. So. Um, in recent years, we've started, we used to do your goal setting at this meeting, um, but we realized that it's difficult for us to wrap that into the budget because it's not tied with the budget. So we'd rather do that in March if that's possible so we can work that into our budget. So, so we would, we're recommending to start goal setting in March and have that feed into our budget guidelines um, along with the staff's goals. So if that's okay with you, we're, we'd recommend doing that. Okay. Question on everything? Mm -hmm. If we're gonna do that, I know sometimes it takes some time. Maybe if we look at March and if we have a, put that on one of the dates that we might have a lighter yeah. agenda and that way we could carry on a pretty good conversation sure. on different things. And that is all I have. Thank you. Um, questions for? Thank you, Attorney. Appreciate it. Moving on to agenda item six, discuss, take action on ordinance 1150. Jim. Ordinance number 1150, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending section 30-510 sub C sub 7, Satellite Beach City Code, to allow accessory structures to be secured slash tied down by any means authorized by the Florida Building Code, if such means are certified by an engineer or architect licensed by the State of Florida to meet all requirements of the Florida Building Code, providing severability, providing an effective date. It's the first reading of Ordinance Number 1150. Thank you. Staff, Carl? Yes, thank you. Sure. Question? I do. Um, I sat at the meeting the other night when you were discussing mm -hmm. this. So basically what they're saying is there's a lot of ways they can tie it down as long as the tie down meets the Florida the building code. The codes. Right. Whether it's on concrete or not. Correct. That's basically what and The reason why we, we kind of brought this up is that we were forcing people to do, add a concrete pad for something that could already be tied down by other means that were approved by the Florida building code and the design professional. And it seemed like a waste of time for them and money. And it was more expensive to try for variance than it would be to for the concrete mm -hmm. pad. So we just we found it just a good idea. Great. Right. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? For I would I would just say is, you know, be a sustainable community, the last thing we really want to do is make everybody pour concrete. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, I mean, that, that, does, that kind of goes against what we keep trying to do is, you know, we don't want to pour any more concrete than we have to. So, I mean, that, that to me makes sense from that point of view. Mm -hmm. The code originally was totally um, weak. It, it just said it had to be attached to a concrete slab. We weren't saying how it had to be attached to a concrete slab. The idea that it was so it doesn't blow away. But there are other methods to do that, and mm -hmm. that's one of the things that brought us to this point. Great. Thank you very much. approve ordinance number 1150 on first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Brimer, second by Councilman Osmer. Mm -hmm. At this time, open up agenda item six for public comment. Hearing no public comment, bring it back to the council. Any further council? I should probably be getting a, a shed a little sooner now. Okay. <laughs> Councilwoman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Primer? Yes. Councilman uh, Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Uh, Councilman Osmer? Yes. And Mayor Patina? Yes, motion passes. Thanks, Carl. Moving on to agenda item seven, discuss, take action on ordinance 1151. Jim? Ordinance number 1151, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, vacating and abandoning the north five feet of the south ten feet of the public utility easement running parallel to the south property line of lot 11 block c amherst garden section 5 unit 2 as recorded in plat book 25 page 117 public records of brevard county florida 529 west amherst circle as described herein providing for severability conflicts recording on an effective date it's the first reading of ordinance number 1151 thank you Carl? Um, this was kind of an uh, odyssey of mistakes, I guess is all you can say. Mm -hmm. The people bought the, swimming, the house with the swimming pool encroaching 0.4 feet into an easement. 
They got a vacation baggies, and then they got permitted a pool deck and a, a screened-in enclosure, now four and a half feet into the easement. So they bought this all like this all before they were even involved in the home. And they want to just be able to utilize the rest of that five foot easement along that, that line because they have something not all the way in the easement but partially in the easement and they want to utilize the rest of it. Um, it was no no fault of theirs and um, it seems pretty easy. We have no no objection from any utilities or the public works. Thank you. Um, questions from council? I, again, I was at that meeting too when it's We've had this, I think, many <laughs> times. It's in there. Yeah. So. That's what I was going to say. I don't have any questions, but I mean, these issues have been coming up for years. That, yep. You know that I've been involved in the city. So, um, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 1151 on first reading. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro, second by Councilman Osmer. At this time, I'll open up for public comment on agenda item seven. Hearing no public comment, back to council. Council comments. Grace. Councilwoman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Breimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda number eight, discuss, take action on the purchase of fire bunker gear. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the staff is asking to for you to waive the bid process to purchase fire bunker gear under the Lake County, Florida contract 17-0606 in the amount of $31,864.64. We do have this budgeted in the capital assets fund for $40,000 and this would basically purchase 16 sets of bunker gear from Bennett Fire Products Company, Inc. under pricing included in the Lake County, Florida contract. And if you look through that quote, it's a no-brainer to go with that contract. If we bid it out, we probably, there's no chance that we would get that price. So um, staff is recommending approval of, of waiving the bid process in um, the amount of $31,864.64. One quick question, because then this is great. I looked at Do we have bunker gear and it's dated where mm -hmm. we have it's to? definitely time to, right. to okay. change that out. Mm -hmm. So make sure. Um, any questions from council? This time I'll open up agenda item eight for public comment. There are no public comment. Back to council. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to authorize the waiver of the bid process to purchase Florida bunk, fire bunker gear under the Lake County, Florida contract 17-0606 in the amount of 31864-64. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Osner. Further discussion from council? There are none. Grace? Councilwoman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Breimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item nine. Discuss, take action on the valuation of backyard chicken pilot program. This came in fairly loudly, but it's been very quiet since. <laughs> um, we've had basically six permits in the last year and a half. We had three in 16, three in 17. Um, we've had five complaints is all. Two were not even in the city limits, so we could do nothing. We had two roosters that were unfounded, and then we had some chickens get loose after uh, Irma, and they permitted afterwards. So we've had very, we had no complaints, and people have complied with what they needed to do. Thank you. Um, comments from council? No, no idea. Uh, <laughs> I hold one of those permits. <laughs> hold on, I, I do have one question on if this is the time or the place for that um, in the ordinance. Um, there's, is this the time to go over the, something I think needs to change in the ordinance or be removed totally, to be honest? Yes, but I want to clarify okay. that the way this ordinance was written was that after... Um, Basically, right now, we require a permit, but we can move on to not requiring permits. That, am I saying this correctly? Yeah, if they want to change it, go. Okay. <coughs> so that's what we would recommend, is to so move where forward. So where, where in the uh, ordinance are we looking at? What, what section is it? What number is it? Or where is it? 
It's in subparagraph 12 on the bottom of the second page. So we would have to change the ordinance? Correct. Okay. We don't charge anything for a permit, do we? No. If we don't charge that, does that just kind of give us a little indication of what's out there? We have a follow-up. Once they get everything ready, we go out there and take a look at what they've done so they can apply it to the ordinance. And then we just check off on it and we go from there. I would, I understand that we haven't had any problems, but I would rather keep the permit process in place because part of us being able to go out and look at it is to make sure it's not on your neighbor's fence and that the coop itself was where it needed to be. If we don't have a permit process and we're not going out and looking at it, we don't know where it is. And I don't know whether that would prompt complaints, but I mean, I think the original intent was to make sure that we were not putting a chicken coop on a fence next to somebody's neighborhood. I mean, so that it was in a spot that was not going to impact the neighbor. And I thought that was probably why we did it. We did, but we've noticed that even if the chicken coop was next to the fence, the neighbor very rarely knows. I mean, they're just so quiet. They don't make noise. They don't smell. They don't have any impact. So the permit... I don't have a problem if you want to remove it. I don't care either way. I just thought it was a good check and balance that you know it was done right. Yeah. And, you know, it was done right. It's where it's supposed to be. And it doesn't come back to haunt us later. I mean, I doubt it's the same as, I mean, it didn't haunt us before we even had this ordinance. We didn't even know. And it's basically a non-issue. But if it's here, does it give us some ability to make sure it's right so we don't have a problem? People know they have to build it to this code. I'm not... Well, it's still in the code, right? And the way our code enforcement kind of works now is that if there's a problem, somebody calls, and then you can go and check it out at that point, right? So why would this be any different? Well, because without this, you could build it and put it in the wrong location, okay? And you have no ability to check it. We don't. The perfect example is those two sheds that are sitting on Magnolia that is the reason why we did the tie-down thing, because now they have to be moved. You know, the permit process allows us to catch stuff like this before we run into the scenario that we're running into there. So I don't know. I know this has worked really good. In fact, we get no complaints. We didn't get complaints before. Obviously, when the people did it, they did it right because we had a process that they knew someone was going to come out to make sure it was installed properly. So... I feel that there are other chickens out there, but we don't want to... I mean, I think the thinking here is that we don't want to make it too difficult so that people don't come in to get a permit. We don't know that they have chickens at all. I understand that. I mean, I will guarantee you there's more than six people that have chickens. I'd bet that one pretty quickly. They're hamsters. They're not chickens. Right. But whatever. But my only issue is that I kind of want it to be right because I don't want to see the problem occur to have a problem and then people come back and go, you know, why aren't you looking? Why did you take it out? Mark, you look very different. I see where Mindy's coming from. What I would say we do just to kind of meet up halfway on the whole thing is do another report in a year from now, see what's going on, and at that time pull it if we want to pull it. I have to agree. Let it go. We've only had this in place for a year. I agree with Carl saying there's no issues, that sort of thing, but we do have a way to check that one more year, and if it becomes a waste of time, do what Mindy said, take it out. But I'd give another year just to say so that we didn't be too knee-jerk reaction on this too quickly. I just feel that we don't want to – I don't want to – the whole idea is the concept of why we wanted chickens. So people have them as pets. They are a food source. They – you know, there's all sorts of – there's a whole movement in the country and the world right now to have these, and I don't want to deter people because, okay, you know what, you have chickens, you do have a coop, but you know what, you didn't do a permit. So now, you know, 
we're gonna you're gonna be uh, do we find them or do we just no, know we get the, chickens, the, the, the chickens, chickens that were loose <laughs> the chickens that were loose after the hurricane were not permitted and they got out and we had a complaint about them we went and talked to them they said sure we'll come and get a permit and it's no fee permit um it's a matter of minutes and then they're out the door yeah i mean i have one so i mean i understand it but i don't like you it. have a dog yeah right? do we ever have to get to that didn't deter me from buying a dog i just want to make sure you know, we do it right so it doesn't start becoming an issue. We don't get for rabbits or birds or that's just my whole thing. Like we did we ever do an article that basically said, you know, you can have chickens now and you know, you just have to come in and get a permit, it's no no cost. I mean it, it let's you know, maybe we need to just do that again and put another little blurb on the next beach caster and say the ordinance is still in place and if you're gonna have chickens, just come in and get a permit. I mean it's I do have one change I would like to put requests on, and, and it's just something that when I wasn't on council when this was coming through, I was very strongly standing on the other side of the diocese, um, you know, stating my opinion. But the one thing that I think should just be taken out, and I'm, I'm just going to say this because I've, I've actually, well, I probably shouldn't say this. So, number five of section 4-13, it says a dead backyard chicken shall be immediately removed from the property and disposed of at the Brevard County landfill. Okay. I, I mean, most of these people, these chickens are their pets. <laughs> and more than likely, they're, they're going to want to have a funeral for them. If you have children, and bury them in the backyard. Maybe do a headstone. I'm not kidding. So telling people they have to dump their, their chicken in the garbage so it can go to the landfill, I think, is a little. So in other words, just change the order to dispose of properly. Yeah. Or something, yeah. And just leave it at that. Or just remove it. I mean, the, yeah, the idea of saying dispose of it properly means just don't throw it out in the driveway and let it lay yeah. there, right? You, Vultures. I mean, dispose of it properly just means dispose of it properly, whether you want to have a proper burial for it or whatever, or put it in the garbage can, whatever your choice may be. I, but I think that covers what you're trying to get at. You exactly. just say dispose of it properly. Yeah. Right? We just don't want it laying out there. Yeah, I don't want to be breaking rules Jim, because my kids want to have a question for our chicken. <laughs> Dispose of properly, is that a... <laughs> I'll have like to, I mean, I don't, I don't know what there's... Is there a city or... Does it matter? What Do we have to tell people what to do with their dead chicken? No, I, but, but I just want to make sure it's not anything with, from a county yeah, ordinance on yeah. that. Yeah. Well, the reason, I, the reason I say that. That's what I'm saying. Like, why do we so if we could just eliminate that. Yeah, I'd say just here, here would be my concern. I'll just look at this from a, from a pet perspective when you go out there. First of all, to talk about the permit, what's to keep somebody from getting a dog crate, putting it in the backyard, and throwing four chickens in it? If you don't have a permit process, granted, you would like to believe that most people who were going to get the chickens would do the right thing. But you know from dog owners and cat owners, people don't always do the right thing. People chain them up to a tree out back, and this, this happens all the time. It happens in our city, and it happens all over the county. The thing with a permit is, at least going into it, you know they started out the right way with a coop properly placed, put somewhere. Now, again, if they get their permit and six months later, you never hear about it again. But you can say that about anything. A guy could, can build an attachment to his house and get everything approved and then rechange all the wiring and everything else in the house, too, and never have that looked at. But at least going in, again, you know that's done the right thing. I'm saying for the welfare of chickens, like I said, I don't want to see someone get a dog crate and then throw it in their backyard and throw four chickens in it. And you can't stop that because you'd never know it was there. Now, granted, you could still do you that. Know it was there. But I mean, if you had a if you have a permit process, like I said, you know at least from animal welfare standpoint, you know going in at least it started out the right way. That that's why I would say that. Um, and I think Frank made a good point. Is obviously you know right. If, I mean, I got cats, you got dogs, stuff like that. You got to have a permit for it. You got to renew it every year. I get the hate mail. If you're late, you don't get it. We're coming after you. And if someone calls and your dog gets loose, animal control gets a hold of it, you're going to get a fine because you don't have your permit. All that stuff happens anyway. So you do. That is that is common. That's here. From that point, I have birds, and yes, I have a license. I have a license from the state of Florida for having birds. They're, they're exotic, right? But just the fact that I have more than one pet bird and I have, so I do that and every year it costs me $50, $50 to have a permit to have those. Our permit's free. 
and we've only given out six. I don't see where that's kind of time consuming on staff. I don't see where it's bundling up our system if we've only given out six permits in almost 17 months from that point of view. I, I kind of agree with with Mark from the point that we go for another year and just see if it gets any better, any worse. And the only thing I, I would say about when I say about properly is there are rules. If your pet dog dies, you can't let them lay in the driveway. You can't lay them in the front yard and let it lay out there and let the vultures and the vermin and the rats come get that. You can't do that. You know, you would get called, someone would show up, and something would happen. I, I, and I just tried to say dispose of properly as being as gray as possible, like I said. So you decide you want to have a burial at sea, you want to have, you know, whatever. It, it keeps somebody from taking their dead chicken and throwing it out in the front yard to prove a point to be mean or for whatever reason. That, that, and again, I would like to believe that all chicken owners are good owners, but if that was the case with all pets, you wouldn't have things like SPCA and you wouldn't have animal shelters if all pet owners were good owners. And I think it's just evident it's not, that's not always the case. So that's just where I kind of look at it. I, I am, I'm all for the way we're doing it. I just want to make sure that we keep most everybody happy with that. Let's idea. look at number five here. We said what we're going to do with the dead backyard chicken. Can we just remove that whole section from that? Is that the, let me ask you, from that standpoint, because of how they properly might turn out, can we just remove that? I recommend just remove Everybody be? I mean, yeah. To be, to be honest, I have a dog that's 120 pounds right now, and when he goes in the backyard, if I don't pick it up immediately, my neighbors can smell it. But I, ha I do not have a five-page ordinance telling me how to take care of my dog. Yeah. It's true. Chickens, Rabbits. you do not smell them. You don't hear them. I agree. They don't make any impact on neighbors whatsoever. And there's no permit required for a rabbit, and you have to have a rabbit hutch for rabbits. You have to build the structure. You have to put it in. We don't require people to come in and... I mean, to be honest with you, you're more likely, if you have two pets, you have a rabbit and you have a chicken. If we're, this is what, what it just, it, I'm kind of dumbfounded because a rabbit could actually hurt you because it can bite you and it can scratch you. I can test that. A I chicken haven't. can't do anything to you. The only thing that, that people, I think, can't wrap their mind is they think of it as a farm animal. They, they really get a rooster, okay, that's, a, that's another story, okay? We don't want roosters anyway, but we have to have a permit to have a chicken we don't have to have a permit to have rabbits, and I'm pretty sure you can have as many as you wanted, rabbits, flies, and trust me, they smell way worse than chickens. I think the... the so first off, we're at number five here, right? We're, 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 okay, let me just bring this back. Right now, what we were working on was brought up to remove was what you did with the dead backyard chicken. So let's one thing consensus-wise, are we saying get rid of that? Yes. Okay, so we're going to strike that. Now... We are, um, we, I can open up for public comment or somebody can make a motion. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I think we've discussed. We don't, do we, no. We're here just going to ask staff to come back with a new ordinance, right? We don't really need a motion. I don't think we need a new ordinance. No. No. You need to remove, you need an ordinance to remove that section out of the. Yeah. You need a new ordinance? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll have staff come back with a new is that a yeah okay. I mean and, and actually because I mean if you read what basically what it says it says staff is recommending the program continue unchanged yeah. so if we do it unchanged and with the exception of taking out number five that just leaves the permit and leaves everything else as right, but is since then <coughs> we've had the concern you know that we have a regulatory system to solve a problem that we don't have that, that's the concern so if you if we want to keep the permit in place, that's, you know, it doesn't have an staff impact, obviously. It's not that big of a deal for us. It's just from a, you know, from a, just a comparison standpoint, we have a, a full-blown permitting process for problems that just don't happen. So I look at it as we can I, have another year. And, and I look at it as Mark said. If we come back to this next year and it's just the same 
Mm -hmm. Right. We can get rid of it. I agree I mean, with that, I'm too. I'm not adverse to letting it go one more year and see what happens. Let so me do this since it is an agenda item. Open up agenda item 9 for public comment. Okay, and here no public comment. Back to council. Um, council wishes here. I would like to make a motion to accept the staff findings regarding the valuation of the backyard chicken, chickens pilot program along with the removal of section 413, number five of section 413 for us to review in the next council meeting. So, I'll second question. it. Hey, Jim, has it had give direction? Yes. Okay. I just want to, okay. I have a motion by Councilwoman Gibson. I have a second by Vice Mayor Montanero. Questions? Uh -huh. Hearing them. Grace. Councilwoman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. At this time, move on to agenda item 10. Discuss, take action on ordinance 1152. Ordinance number 1152, an ordinance of the city of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending the city board's handbook created by ordinance number 1101, as amended by ordinance numbers 1137 and ordinance number 1138, to amend the number of members of the sustainability board to include a non-voting member to be appointed by Brevard County and to provide non-voting members of the sustainability board not to be considered for purposes of establishing quorum, providing severability and providing an effective date to the first reading of ordinance number 1152. Thank you. Um, Good question. Mm -hmm. The last, I think the first meeting in, I think it was December or maybe one of them. Right. We put somebody on a board who didn't live in satellite. Ad hoc committee, yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will that make that turn out okay? Okay. So. We're going to have to revisit that. It's an ad hoc committee and it's like for four weeks, so we're going to do a whole ordinance change for someone for four weeks. Yeah. So I was going to call that individual and just ask them to just come to the meetings and participate, but we can't appoint them. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we weren't. Yeah. Tired. We started thinking about that and adding that provision to the ad hoc committee, but, uh, you know, where does that end? You know, we have it for the sustainability because sustainability that doesn't stop at the borders, but, where, you know, when do we stop allowing non city residents to be on the boards and so we, we're concerned with that of expanding it too much you know? right. I just want to make sure yeah. we have yeah and I, I agree that, that the the ambassador team we, we should have vetted that a little bit more so we apologize for that but we'll we'll take care of it um, questions from council okay, at this time is, can I ask you please is the county proposing someone um, we, we are um, to the county commissioner and asking him to appoint so we're going to ask Kurt Smith yeah. to appoint someone? Yeah. Okay. Further questions? I'm going to open up for public comment. If there is. At this time, open up public comment on agenda item 10. Hearing no public comment, back to council. Motion to approve ordinance number 1152 on first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Brimer, <laughs> second by Councilwoman Gibson. Sorry. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? I just have one other question, too. Where it says the non-voting members shall not be considered for the purpose of establishing a quorum. Mm -hmm. How many non-voting members are there going to be? Right now we have one, which is um, uh, Dylan, Dylan Hansen, Hansen, because he's a non-citizen right. uh, of the, of the right. state or of the, the country. country. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he can't vote, you know, so that, um, so we, but we added him as an expertise person, but he can't vote in the, in the board. On board. I guess where I'm going with this is we're, we're now we're going to have Dylan, we're going to have a person from the county. Right. How many ultimately could we end up having? And we do have we seven. Wanna, yeah, we just have those well, I'm two. I'm saying we have two voting non-members right now. That's correct. How many, how many more non-voting yeah. members could we ultimately have? That's it. Have? That's all we have. Okay. Yeah, because everybody else is either a, a primary or alternate. Or an alternate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure yeah. we don't have... And we just wanted to make sure that they couldn't... Numbers. They, they couldn't... We wanted to make sure that they were non-voting and couldn't swing the majority. 
especially, you know, because they're not residents. So. Right. Yeah. I, I kind of got that indirectly because it says both positions. So I'm assuming that's two. Right. Both. Okay. Yeah, so we created two with, with the um, environmental expertise and then the county appointment. Right. And really, it was the environmental expertise was really geared towards that particular person. So, you know, if that particular person ever leaves, we probably won't ever have to do you know, right. appoint that. Okay. okay. Further? Yes. Councilwoman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Bremer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Katina? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 11, which is appointment to boards. I believe we have one reappointment, Samson Island Working Board. I'll make a motion to uh, reappoint Sal Floricella to a primary member seat, term ending 1-3-2021. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Further discussions? Grace? Councilwoman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Breimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Um, and that's it. Is there one more? Oh. Next, well, next meeting. Hold on, hold on. Um, agenda item 12, the agenda proposed for our next meeting on January 17th. Please take a look at it. If there's other things you would like, please get with our city manager. Before you adjourn, um, following up on the Gersh fence issue, oh. that at the last meeting I indicated that Mr. Repriger was going to provide me with his quote unquote offer or whatever or response to my telephone call with him, and that came in after the last meeting. Basically, um, there is no indication in the offer quote unquote as to when the fence would be moved. He basically wants to have his clients meet with staff regarding their in intent and the city's interpretation of their intent to do things uh, seaward of their current fence, um, the property that's east of Beach. And they are tying that all in together. Um, I know that the council at the last meeting or at the meeting on which the vote was taken that council was more interested in getting the fence resolved and not tying things together. So, I, but, I, but that was the offer that was made. I need to convey that to you. So um, I guess I just need direction from you. Can I have a question on that? Sure. It's two different. Why, why, I know they probably want to tie it together. Why would I want to tie it together? I mean, I'm just saying yeah. one issue doesn't have anything to do with the other. And, I, and my feeling is when that ever happens up here, nothing ever goes right. So my feeling is the fence is an issue. What he does east of that line is another issue. And a lot of that, what happens east of that line, we don't control. Correct. And, and I will say I talked to Courtney about this, too, and she indicated that there have been at least two or three times, I guess, John's been under oath basically saying what they can and can't do anyway. So They can I, just read the deposition. <laughs> my thing is yeah. this thing has gone on mm -hmm. forever. Great. The fence is wrong. Correct fence. That's it. That's fine. I, that's what, that, now that, I, that, listen, I just that had to bring it me, to you. But, uh, and I don't mean it's to step on it, but I need consensus here. Yes. I agree. I thought it was very important that the city council not be involved in anything that facilitates the construction of anything behind the townhomes. So that, you know, if they come in, they have to comply with the permitting standards of the staff and that there's been no special concessions that would allow for any more. And, and I, that was... I felt very important that you know you keep you know stay that line. Yeah. Um, so so we you know we're recommending that we just move forward with the injunction and, and just okay okay is that fine with everyone here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. Thank you. I just have one real quick. Um, Councilman Osmer wanted to add the TPO to the the calendars, and we're going to add the Florida League of Cities conferences to the calendar. Um, so if there's any other common meetings that you attend that would be helpful for you to have on the calendar can you let us know so when we do that we'll, we'll add those to you for, for you i know a lot of you depend on it so if there's a reoccurring meeting that you're required to be at all the time we'll, we'll stick it on here for you okay so get with 
Court may hear phrases on that or whatever you need on that. I appreciate it. As you see, I'm taking my calendar with me, so I have that. And you're right, I do rely to that a lot. So we'll add, we'll start adding some more stuff to it to make it better for you. Any further business? Can we, can we get this calendar to us? Sure. Because it'd be easier to keep it in a file on an email. Okay. You know, to be able to refer back to it than ripping it out. Why don't you get us your meeting stuff that you want us to add to it, and then we'll make it and send you a draft. And if that's okay with everybody, then we'll just get on that schedule. So when we change it, we'll send it over to you. Perfect. I think what I'll do is ask Julie when events come up I need to be at, just to put me on it. Yeah. Okay. Is there any, any further business before council? Can I have any of everybody? Meetings adjourned. Thank you.